It's always nice when I get to review something that is bigger than the things that fit in our pockets, but this might be the least pocketable thing that I have ever had the pleasure of checking out. This is Pocket Now, and I'm Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? This behemoth of a screen is the Vizio P75QX H1. All right, so anyone with memories of classic Vizio remembers their budget-friendly televisions that probably graced many a college dorm room. But in recent years, the company's been doing a really great job of upping their game both in display quality and screen size. I mean, look at this thing. It's 75 inches, just barely fitting on this TV stand that I had to buy just for it. And in this 4K Quantum.TV, there are a ton of different homegrown technologies that help create the best experience possible for viewing and, at least in my case, gaming pleasure. A bit of a disclaimer real quick, for years I have been on a 1080p Samsung television right here in my family home. I might not be the most frugal person, but I just didn't feel the massive pull from the new TVs. I realize now that I have absolutely been missing out. In a nutshell, this television is massive and super bright and vivid. All of that goodness is pumped out using full array LEDs that can be catered in the settings to do local zone adjustments for the best quality. More on all of that in a little bit. I'm no massive expert when it comes to televisions, but regardless, I've been blown away by the image. And with the brightness of up to 2700 nits, I actually have it kind of turned down right now for the purposes of this video, the amount of contrast that can be achieved with the deep blacks among that brightness is really a treat for the eyes. Now, adjustments happen in 300 180 local array zones so that images are adjusted on the fly in each and every part of the scene. These particular settings are found in a few places in the menu where you can do things like set the local contrast and also the level of that full array automatic adjustment. There's a lot going on here. Getting the best experience does take a bit of tweaking, which at its base level means getting into the picture profiles and then getting into the advanced picture settings. Now if you're just playing content straight from the television's built-in SmartCast layer, getting access to most of your usual content is all inclusive. In fact, many of the streaming services are prominently displayed on the remote, even though in my case maybe just Netflix is being used from these buttons. Remember Crackle? As you can see behind me, there's also built-in AirPlay and Google Chromecast support, complete with these standby splash screens on Chromecast in particular. Now, Jaime always teases me about my love of K-dramas, but I've found them to be a great way of measuring the quality you're seeing right now. Shows like Crash Landing on You are high on color and usually have a lot of bright scenes. In my case, I actually found the vivid color profile to be a little too much in certain situations. I had to play around with the skin tones to get them where I wanted them. These shows were also an immediate look at 4K upscaling, uh, since most streaming services are not outputting more than 1080p unless you pay for it. I found that the built-in software was basically on par with the streaming capabilities of things like my Chromecast with Google TV or my next-gen consoles. But honestly, connecting these other products to the HDMI ports gets you more of those settings to tweak your output. If you tend to be really meticulous with your image preferences, you should definitely invest in something to connect to the HDMI ports rather than just relying on the built-in streaming software. In terms of raw detail during all the upscaling, I've had no complaints. There is a little bit of noise that will always be there because of the nature of upscaling, but you can adjust the level of noise reduction and motion smoothness in the settings. Speaking of which, I haven't had any major problems with judder, uh, which is where you see motion actually be a little bit stuttery, and I found that a medium setting here is best for general needs. The only time I've noticed a dip in overall quality is when watching Hulu Live TV, which kind of makes sense though because it's a live and typically lower resolution broadcast feed and it's not like a straight 1080p or 4K movie from like Netflix. Now the full array LED zones make it so that the already deep blacks and high levels of contrast can be further enhanced by locally changing different backlighting zones. This can usually mean a more amazing image, but I learned there are times when you have to get into the settings and tweak things up. This is something I learned in real time with a recent episode of The Mandalorian. Warning, very light spoilers in these clips. A recent episode was a very dark one in terms of locale and scene. It was meant to be viewed as a darker setting because that's the way it was shot. It's a little bit like that one Game of Thrones episode. And it was in this context that I experienced the backlight blooming. There are some people in the reviews who talk about the blooming. Blooming is where the lighting zones might be a little bit wider than the actual subject that it's reproducing, causing a bit of a halo effect around the subject that can be a little bit distracting. In that dark episode, the obvious culprits were the lightsabers, the gunfire, and actually, the subtitles. It's in these situations that you might find yourself fiddling with the full array option. Medium seems to be the default setting in many of the picture modes, but I find it best uh, to view this kind of content in the way it was meant to be seen, as a dimmer image overall. I would not try to push the image so much that issues like blooming actually arise. 
Of course, you'll have to make that decision for yourself and find the settings that work for you. Okay, so let's get some other stuff connected to this TV. The ports are abundant here, complete with four HDMI connections, optical audio, and even an Ethernet port. There's only one USB port though. The number one HDMI port includes eARC connectivity, meaning that you can get a compatible audio product like the Vizio M-Series all-in-one soundbar uh, for an easy sound connection that is then controlled by the TV's remote. And that's something you're going to want to do because the built-in speakers on this TV are definitely the weakest part of the experience. Now, the second port is a mostly standard HDMI 2.1 capable port, and then there are the last two ports. That 4K 120Hz is definitely what a lot of you out there might be looking at on these TVs, especially if you're looking at those next-gen consoles. Speaking of which, I have mine connected, and what's nice is that the TV is smart enough to detect what is connected and name them accordingly, automatically. But the thing is, the PS5 seems to be having a little bit of trouble in the HDMI ports here. I had it connected to the 4K 120Hz ports, hoping to turn on all of the different settings and get everything from variable frame rate to HDR on that port. In theory, I should have been able to get into the PlayStation settings and just turn on all of the display options, but apparently certain features like VRR from the console seem to shake things up. It's almost as if a combination of 4K, 120Hz, VRR, and 444 color space all together are a little bit too much for the one HDMI port to handle before some software tweaks happen. This was also the case with the Xbox Series S, in which I had to find the right combination of settings to get a working image in HDMI 2.1, rather than 1.5. Now 1.4 is selectable as a quick fix, but then you lose out on some of those extra video features. Forums and Reddit threads say that a firmware update is meant to address these issues I'm talking about, and in the meantime, some people have been finding workarounds. Without getting too deep into it for this video, basically 4K 120Hz can be achieved if you go into the PlayStation Safe Mode and lower a couple of the HDMI color output settings so that higher refresh rate at 4K can be achieved. So I went ahead and did that, and so far the only game I have on my PS5 that is 120Hz capable is Devil May Cry 5. And it's been a blast, with very minimal screen tearing meaning that the high refresh rate is indeed firing and it is an incredibly smooth experience. Bottom line, if you're getting this TV because of the 4K 120Hz capabilities, it might be some time before you can really enjoy it without all of that extra headache. Vizio is on the case apparently, but it's not a simple plug and play situation just yet. For now, as long as I'm getting 4K out with HDR for the super vivid colors and the contrast, the gaming experience has been nothing short of amazing. So yes, this TV was a very timely addition to my tech because I'm lucky to have both of the new consoles and they have found a home in this massive 75-inch TV. But for most people, the built-in SmartCast, AirPlay, and Chromecast support will cover a ton of the media consumption bases. If what you're looking for is a massive but brilliant picture for your viewing pleasure, Vizio has really delivered here. And these days, I've actually been seeing some sales on this 75-inch, with prices coming down from the $19.99 retail to as low as $15.99 on Black Friday. So if you were to wait a little bit, you might be able to shave a few hundred dollars off if you wait for the deal to come. Super contrast, brilliant colors, high brightness, and a massive display are all for your viewing pleasure. And with the great content and gaming that we're getting right now and will continue to get, it might be the perfect time for you to make that investment. I know the next-gen consoles are kind of hard to get right now, but you still might want to get an upgrade for your viewing experience, and Vizio's been doing a really great job with their Quantum Dot televisions. This is the latest one for 2020, and it is the perfect addition to when you actually do get those next-gen consoles. Let me know if you have one of these TVs or any of the other Vizio Quantum Dot displays. Uh, let me know what your experience has been like and what you have been watching, uh, things like The Mandalorian perhaps, on TVs like this. Get into those discussions in the comment sections down below. At the very least, drop some likes on this video and subscribe to pocket now for videos that are coming out basically every single day. With all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other, and we will see you in our next video.